guys and good uh, afternoon uh, today is the 30th of uh, the january 2022 um, today i uh, will want to take you through some of uh, that is some experiences that uh, as a farmer generally as a farmer but this is really talking to uh, the breeder uh, or if you are a farmer or and you are raising a fish from uh, the fryer's position, maybe from uh, the uh, pre fingerlings to juvenile size or to jumbo size, uh, this uh, a little lecture, this brief lecture is talking to you. So I'll be talking about something very, very important which uh, most farmers are not taking very, very serious. Uh, many farmers are doing that. I'm not saying that there are a lot of farmers, there are a lot of professionals out there that knows what I'm really talking about. But I'm talking to those that are not really keen or those breeders that are those fish raisers, that means children raiser that don't really understand some of these techniques that is really working or helping uh, you guys out there. I said it once again that there are a lot of people that knows about this and uh, they may not be uh, the, the opportune enough to to update you, to tell you, that means to give you some lectures about it too as well. But I I just thought it did me fit. I've been doing this for a very, very long time. It's a little bit secret about mine too as well, which I do for my uh, fish prevention, uh, fish transportation. And uh, disease control so I would just like to share some tips uh, with you maybe you are having such uh, uh, problems but before I go more deep into what I'm really talking about today I want to tell you guys that at present there is a the climate is changing and uh, the Amatan period runs now to January to February as we are entering February I is running into February so uh, the this is some of the difficult times for every breeder it will be very difficult now for every breeder to have seed successfully it is somehow very difficult now for a breeder maybe if you're even if you hatched and your fish even comes out it comes it seems a little bit difficult now for you to manage it because because of the uh, weather the harsh and the cold weather it comes together to affect uh, your seedlings and affecting your fishes maybe sometimes you hatch and it comes out maybe three to seven days you see them that they started dropping drastically these are some of the period that you have that sometimes you may try all what you have but by the end of the day it may not uh, you may not be well satisfied so this period now there must be a check and balances what i mean by check and balances if you are in that terrain that means in the environment that the cold is so much the amount drops so much in the in the morning so it is advisable for you not to feed because one on health you know the efficiency of your feeding and with this with the little secret I want to give to you today, I would give you more how your fishes can be more efficiency in their feeding. There are some technical things you have to do. It doesn't really matter uh, that you read this in the book. These are practical. Uh, uh, they are practical lessons uh, because uh, I I I don't know. Maybe you can read it out. Maybe somebody have uh, written it before. I don't know, but these are what I practice, and I do notice that it works. And I want to share with you guys. So I'm saying about this particular period now. This is the time for you to really have a thermometer in your farm, steady. You must have a pH reagent in your. Uh, in your pond in your farm ready you must have what we call the natarite and the nitrate kit in your farm ready because of the water because the little amount of feed you give to your fish now really tells on them because one if you give them a little amount of feed or you are giving them feed as you are giving them before 
this some of the feed may come to wastages and when it comes to wastages the fishes may not be able to consume it and as they are not consuming the feed the feed is building up what we call the natarite in the water natarite are wasted they are mucus there are a lot of things that build up natarite that means they are feces uh, they are the moco that comes out from them the uh, the uh, the wasted food you are giving them the overfeed uh, feed that means you have given them those are what puts it out the natarite and once the natarite is affected the um, the dissolved oxygen too is affected because of the climate change so this has you need to know how to balance all those uh, uh, things but before much i do i would like to take you through some of you the first thing you do i told you before you must have a thermometer at least to know the readings of your of your environment if you're in an enclosed shop please that means that is that this is the time that you, if you want even want to feed in the morning or in the evening if you are in an enclosed place that means a shady place that means where you can control your temperature it is highly advisable for you guys that you are doing perfect at this time but if you are in an open place you will need to shade your ponds that means to cover your pond well so that this will really not affect them this is the time you started experiencing some of the diseases some of the infections you have not uh, seen uh, before so but to me the first thing you do is that if you i said it earlier if you have not gotten the ph bit or oh, but but my the one i have here comes with uh, the the ph kit i have here comes with the uh, the ph and the chlorine uh, kit so but if you you must have that too as well this is how it comes it comes with the ph it comes with the tube this is the tube and it comes with the chlorine so this one comes with this so it, it is very very important for you to have kit to test at least to have to know what is really happening what can happen and how it can happen sometimes if you started experiencing what we call a disease outbreak in your farm you must first diagnose what can really cause it what is now the problem and what is the solution those are the three places you need to tackle so what i do is that anytime i visit my ashy site in the morning i make sure that i i test my water yeah. i make sure that i test my water so to me i'm just taking you through what i think you can do as well so once you go to your farm now make sure that the first thing you do is to test your water so i'll be testing my water to see what i can have so after testing my water i will now take you through some of the other things i do too as well that really helps me helping me and uh, making sure that at least i have seedlings at a very given period so what i do is that by the time i do and i test my water <laughs> so as you can see now this water is telling me i'm having like 6.5 6.5 means what i have done to the water she understands because what i do is that i told you something uh, is if i change my water i make sure that i have my uh, seashell ready in order to control uh, some of the parameters i think it can help most especially the pa side of it and i do use what we call the calcium chloride if you know about that it's a little bit scarce but it's very very good to uh, to use too as well to balance some of these uh, 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 water parameters too as well so so after that because of this time now i don't do much of uh, overfeeding so i will now test what we call i will now test for the nitrite so this is the kit for the nitrite so testing for the nitrite is to know the volume of uh, the nitrite level in that water where are my fishes really staying are my fishes staying under the pond are they coming at the surface of the pond those are what you check to 
as well. It's water you shake that. So this is the nitrite kit and the nitrite kit uh, that I use in testing uh, my my water. And if you need all these two, you can as well uh, contact me. I may mention of it before. And again, in order to prevent some of all these things, I try to I try to use this. Uh, you can see I'm using it. This is what I normally use. Uh, and uh, why do I use this? This is what we call uh, the water purifying uh, kit. What this does is that one, it uh, helps you to purify your water. It helps you take off some of the uh, sodium uh, surface, maybe uh, sulfate organic uh, organisms that's inside your pond. That means those organisms that can cause diseases to your fryers as deep at this particular time. And what another thing is that is that it purifies your water from iron. Maybe if you are having iron in your water, it helps you sieve the iron out. It sieves the iron out for you. And the good thing about it is that you may know about it is what this is what we call in hop here we have what we call the sodium sulfate, which is the sodium sulfate is the sodium that breaks the sulfate level, the, that means the sulfate organism in the water. So this breaks them down. That means it helps you to kill them. All those uh, hidden uh, anti uh, microorganisms that is inside your water that can really affect your fishes when you are not around, when you don't know. This helps me to break it down. It helps me a lot. And going down inside is what we call it has uh, it has about four five layers. I showed it before on one of my video. It has four layers. The four layer, the first layers is the is the wool. That means the sieve that is sieving all this thing I'm talking about. So after passing through the sieves, it passed through what we call the sodium sulfate. I told you before what sodium sulfates normally do, uh, and it takes you to the zoolite. Everybody know what uh, zoolite, the importance of zoolite to our water, that is everybody is using that for water filtration. If you are if you are using a recirculatory system or you are having a water filtration plant, you must have what we call the zoolite. It must be inside your water, in addition to other things that people do use. Like people do use rocks, people use uh, uh, sea sands and co. So all these things are inside here. This thing has been break down by the solite and the sodium sulfate. Again, it now went through to the activated carbon. So activated carbon reduces the smell of your water, filtrates your water, purifies your water, and give you a very, very good result. So how do I use that? I use that through one. I By the time I'm putting water in this tank this morning, I will... I will take out this and I will now open the water. Okay, because I'm taking out this, so let me just use it from here. So I will take out this. I will now use the water. So how does this work? Is that okay? Let me just put it here. So it works like this, and by the time it's like by the time I open my water so what is coming out here is purified water and filtrated water this water um at least sure because there's there are some things that we are not really sure about but with this now if i'm running a flow through system that means if i'm running a flow through system to this tank and i reduce this the water to of this level she understand and I reduce it to your this level and I open the outlet to this level and I went to sleep. So this will tell me that any kind of microorganisms cannot affect my fishes. This fishes is being break down by the sulfate, uh, sodium sulfate, is break down by the zoolite and is break down by what we call the activated carbon. So it's just an assurance for me. It is not mandatory, but this is just to give you an assurance. It's like you, uh, securing your farm it's just simple as that if you have a farm and you don't secure it so this is just a mission for me to make sure that i secure my farm 
and is a mixture for other people too that are having what we call the filtration plant, the filtrating plant and the uh, the treatment plant too as well. So having that too as well, this is what is inside. So they are rest assured that at least they are trying their best. So any other result that may comes out from fish mortality, maybe one, it may be direct from your borehole, it may be temperature, it may be the feed, it may be the feed. So let me give you an instance. I I just want to break down what I mean by feed to you. I've not gotten to where I'm going, so sorry. This is I this I can break down this uh, video down to part one, part two, most likely part three because it's an educative video. Mm -hmm.